Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dakota Franson, and today is Mon. No, no. Ah, scratch, 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 scratch. You know what? Scratch that. You're probably wondering, Dakota, what's with the new episode so early? This is what is what this so early? Well, you know what? Uh, screw it. I will publish it tonight. Today. It's Monday, June 3rd. I thought that I would... I was initially going to wait a couple weeks in order to do this new segment I'm adding to my show. But I received a news article link that caught my attention. And therefore, I had... I decided it'd be a perfect time... To start this segment, which I am calling Dakota's Declassified. What does that mean, you asked? Well, now that we're starting to get a bit more of an audience, I thought maybe, and you guys can tell me if I'm wrong, maybe you guys would like to hear more than just the teachings. Of the supernatural I do. I figured you guys. Would actually want to hear. More. Of my cases. Real life. Paranormal investigations. Spanning into. Nearly every definition of the word. Nearly aspect you can think of about it. And hear how it is. I acquired some of this knowledge. So, before we get into the first episode, which you can probably already guess what it's going to be about by reading the episode description, I'm going to lay down a few ground rules about this. For those of you who come to me for help, if I deem it is safe, bring up these cases I will take steps to preserve and keep your identity a secret you have my word if I deem a case too dangerous to speak of or I feel it is perhaps too soon I will not bring it up until it is safe to do so. These cases are not made up in any way, shape, or form. This is the stories of completely unfiltered. The stories themselves are unfiltered, but the identities are changed to protect those who are involved. That's what I'm laying down. If I decide to help you in your regards, yes, there's a chance you can end up on this show. And that mentioned, like I said, I'm going to span out some time. Thankfully, officially, I have about nine years worth of cases to work with right now. So, it may be a bit before yours gets mentioned. However... What I'm going to talk about is not going to push any sort of agenda other than telling my stories. This will not seek to harm, talk shit about, discredit necessarily. There might be a few people we have to go after to Clear some things up, basically. This is going to be unfiltered. This is going to be true. And if I am able to uncover 
any audio clips pertaining to this case because, to be honest, like I said, it's been a few years and uh, a lot's gone down to where some of that data has been destroyed. Some just happened by happenstance. The devices I had them on got destroyed and I didn't have any backups. I've been able to uncover some old stuff, so don't worry, you're going to get some real life recordings. And if I present real evidence on this show pertaining to the specific case, I will let you know. To which you will also need to be advised, you might want to grab a pair of headphones or listen very carefully. So now, now that's over, what are we going to talk about for this very first episode? I'm going to talk about a case that I worked on in Scotland. In Loch Ness. I'm talking about my hunt for the Loch Ness Monster. Why did I choose this case to open up this segment with? Because, as some of you may know, there's been an article released pertaining to a study done to catalog the DNA of various specimens with that live within the lock. Indicating that in answer to what the Loch Ness Monster may actually be is within those findings. We're going to talk about it, that article. We're going to talk about how I ended up in lo on Loch Ness. And we're going to talk about the incident that happened that put me into tabloids last year for having nabbed the very first sighting of the Loch Ness Monster for the year 2018. So we're going to take a quick commercial break, and then we're going to dig into the nitty gritty. I hope you're excited, ladies and gentlemen, because you're going to want to hear this. Hey everyone, Dakota Franson here, specialist of the strange. I just wanted to come with you real quick about potentially doing your own podcast. Have you ever wanted to start your own podcast? Maybe you got a lot of questions like, how do I record? How do I get my show into all these apps that are out there? How can I make money? There are probably several thousand, thousand, thousand other questions about getting this show off the ground that you have been formulating and communicating in your mind. And I'm here to tell you that there is a very simple answer to this. Anchor. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, distributing your show. And best of all, it is 100% free. Get all the perks from the other guys without having to pay for subscription fees. And best of all, it is easy and in fact anchor can match you up with sponsors who want to advertise on your podcast right now which means you can get paid doing what you love isn't that the fucking dream my friends in fact that's actually what i'm trying to do right now by reading this ad for you it is amazing. It helps ease the process for guests, putting on music, whatever you want to do. So if you want to start your podcast, make some money doing it, go to anchor.fm slash start to join me and several other fabulous people already using Anchor. That's anchor.fm slash start and I cannot wait to hear you on the air so where should I begin I guess if uh, I imagine by me telling you guys these story stories that you probably wouldn't mind if uh, I included details that 
gave you all a chance to get to know me a little better. So, let's uh, get into the nitty gritty, shall we? Sorry, I'm just moving things to the side. Getting myself comfortable like I'm on a therapy couch. Yeah, so this might be some of the cases I've been through. That's what this is going to amount to anyways. So, I guess, I guess I should start from the very beginning. Ever since I was a child, the idea of some strange, unidentified creature roaming the earth completely fascinated me. I was very much a geeky type of kid. One of my strongest subjects in school was science. Being able to explore and understand the world around me was always something I was fascinated in. How certain things work, to what made people act the way they do. Why certain things happen a certain way. What's out there that we may have never even seen or even thought of before. So even to this very day, I subscribe to a lot of scientific journals to read over just various, various topics, right? from dealing from newly discovered animals to planets in the, in the sky, new bones in the human body that were identified. You name it, I probably looked it up. And that was just me. If there was anything that ever caught my interest, I usually took the time to try to research it a little better. To understand it more. When it came to the Loch Ness Monster, <laughs> you can imagine me being a nine-year-old kid hearing that a dinosaur may still be roaming the earth. Hearing that a dinosaur may still be roaming the earth was an interesting concept to me. I read nearly every piece of lore I could find on the matter, hoping to one day get my shot at spotting the Loch Ness Monster with my very own eyes. It wasn't until late March of 2017, I was actually in Thailand when I got news of an offer. For a few years after I graduated from high school, I decided to take a few trips across the globe to different destinations just to kind of go explore, you know, the whole finding myself and getting to cross off a few items from my bucket list. Basically, my thought process was, and still is technically, I wasn't married with kids yet, so... If I wanted to do something potentially risky, potentially stupid, with minimal consequences, if something went wrong, now would be the time to do it. Even though I do have a special lady in my life, I want to try to live life a bit more before I settle down. Anyway. I heard... With these trips I took, there was a bit of a catch. My old psychology teacher from high school hosted these trips yearly. It was an annual thing, take a random group of students from the school, and just go. Have fun, learn some things, and give the kids a chance to really explore themselves in kind of a neutral area. The first trip I went on was to China, the year after that was to Paris and Rome and Holy See or Vatican City, with a brief stop in Amsterdam. That was just mostly for uh, airport layovers. 
The year after that, I went to Thailand, Burma, and Laos. And then the year after that, Ireland and Scotland. Initially, it was planned for Thailand to be the last trip I took, but I heard my teacher, old teacher was hosting one more trip before he left the school. That was to Ireland and Scotland, and I saw the tour itinerary included. Loch Ness. I finally had my shot to go. Yes, I did volunteer to help out with the kids, and it was okay. For those of you who don't know, I'm six foot seven, so I'm a pretty big guy. So most cases, whenever I'm in group scenarios, I'm usually the uh, <laughs> I'm usually the bodyguard. The kids also didn't seem to mind. They all told me that they saw me like a goofy big brother. So the situation worked out. I was good with the kids, helped keep an eye on them to make sure they stayed out of trouble. And I got to travel. So the year after I got back from my Thailand trip, I saved up the money so I could go for Ireland and Scotland. I had an amazing group of kids with me. Honestly, it was probably my favorite bunch. And if any of you are listening, yes, I do mean it. <laughs> Initially, we went through Ireland, Northern Ireland. Loch Ness was towards the end of the trip, so I had some time to explore, get to know the kids a little bit. But once that day came that we finally got to go into the Scottish Highlands and see Loch Ness for the very first time, my eyes did not leave the water. I wanted my shot to see the Loch Ness Monster, to see Nessie with my own eyes, to see if all the legends were true. Now this brought up some confusion because we visited a little gift shop that's right up on the shore where you pick up tickets to go on a ferry ride. I skipped out and stayed outside so I could try to get photos. The weather was amazing that day. We actually got really lucky. The locals described it as freak weather because it was so nice, but it allowed for a bit more visibility into the water. One of the major problems with Loch Ness is that the mineral deposits within the water itself is so thick, the visibility is very low. So, and that's, in fact, it's, some spots it's so thick that sonar actually has problems. Or older models, I should say. Being that the weather was so nice, it allowed for a bit more visibility into the water, which helped out immensely. At first, I thought I saw something moving around, peeking at me, like it knew I was watching. But I just couldn't get it on camera. Or if I did, it was too far away at such an angle to where it was difficult to tell. I'll be completely honest with you. It was difficult to tell. Then we got to go on the ferry ride. For those of you who don't know who may not have been through the area, a lot of the ferry rides actually have onboard sonar. That So just in case something big happens to go under the boats, you, you can try to get a glimpse of it. A lot of people state that through sonar, there's been a couple freak occurrences, but so far, nothing happened to truly indicate a gigantic potential, potentially still living dinosaur was still in that water. The jetty, as they called it, took a, the ride took us from the jetty up to Urquhart Castle. Which excited me even more because just underneath the castle grounds, or the ruins of that castle, there's actually an underwater cave. Believed by many to be Nessie's nesting ground. 
So, once I got a better look, look at the land, I realized what I needed to do. I needed to get up high and just keep my eyes on the water. There was plenty of spots where you could look into the history of the castle, but I was not interested at all. I wanted to see Nessie for myself. I noted that some some activity took place near the jetties, the docks of the ferry systems. I noticed it seemed like something huge was swimming around in that area. About 40 meters long, roughly. It seemed like it was playing around the boats. Like it was curious about them. Perhaps, this is one of the theories that's been tossed out out there. Perhaps Nessie can actually hear sonar. Like a lot of dolphins and whales can. That's one of the theories that are out there. It's hard to test without an actual physical subject. Now I think about it, that would be some painful results. I noticed, well, like I said, I noticed something was moving around those boats within that area. I would notice it would swim out. Let's see, if I remember correctly, it would be about North northwest it was about facing north. It was roughly north northwest where I saw it move, then it would move east. Then seemed like it would sink down. Then I noticed another one start popping up in that same area. And then there was a briefly where I saw two. Potentially I saw at least Four large shapes moving around in that water. This excited me more than anything. I snapped as many photos as I could, but it just wasn't enough. One of the shapes was hanging around the ferry systems, was swimming around behind the main ferry. Now, there's also a speedboat tour. There's a little black speedboat. It was going from south to north, roughly. Then the shape was moving west to east. The speedboat cuts off the large shape. Then all of a sudden, I saw this huge mass literally come out of the water. Literally, like, it was flopped in and out of the water. Like, it was a large creature. I called it the skin of a hippopotamus. That was the clo first thing that came to mind when I thought about it. It was like, you know, large animal, likes to swim, hippo. That was my thought process of why I said that. It was like something huge just tried to stop. However, something that big, it was, and it was moving quick. All the, it, it's, <laughs> it's like the song Three Wooden Crosses. Eighteen wheelers can't stop on a dime. You know, that work. Well, this thing, obviously, it was moving at such a speed to where it would not be able to stop quickly without kind of jarring itself into funky positions. So essentially what I'm saying, I saw Nessie's ass. Now, the second I saw that, my heart started to break. I started to take more pictures, take more pictures, take more pictures, take more pictures. Briefly, in a couple, a couple photos, I think I caught someone. I sent them into the Loch Ness Registry, but they never got uploaded to go with the news reports that followed. Eventually, it was t I. After that happened, I st got down from the high ground. I went over to the docks to try to get a closer look at where I saw it to see 
just praying for it to happen again. Praying for something to come out of the water. The second I thought I saw something come out of the water. Snap, 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 snap. I even had a little UV camera on me. Snap, 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 snap. thought that the ultraviolet light could p penetrate some of the water just enough to where I can see under the surface a little better. Snap, 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 nothing. Snap, 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 nothing. The camera fucking broke. And unfortunately, those images got destroyed. It pissed me off. If I ever find a way, find myself in Scotland again, I need to get myself a fucking GoPro. That's what I'm gonna do. Anyway, so eventually it was time to start rolling out, start start going back to our hotel. Our group gathered up. Our tour guide asked everyone on the bus if we had a Loch Ness encounter. Naturally, everyone knew about my extracurricular activities. So, everyone's attention focused right on me. And my answer was the reason why I also kept it secret. The reason why I kept it a secret initially, my knowledge of Loch Ness, was because I heard a rumor that a reward was available for solid evidence, evidence of the Loch Ness Monster. That wasn't my sole intent for going, but it was a nice ulterior motive. What would I have done with that money? I probably would have funded this operation a little bit, but I would have tried to put it into a good charity. There was a school in Edinburgh that was uh, that had a GoFundMe account open to try to get the school some new playground equipment. I think I would have just given it to them. Anyway. It's not about the money. It was about the thrill of finding some undiscovered creature. So I was searching through my photos, searching through my photos. Everyone wanted to get an answer. Everyone on our tour bus wanted to get an answer from me. To see if the big bad paranormal investigator got what he was after. Minutes passed. I told him I was looking through all my photos. And then, as clear as day. I caught the head in the shot I took just after the ass end of it surfaced. My heart started to race. I started screaming to the top of my lungs. I did it! I fucking did it! My tour, tour guy walks over to the back of the bus. I show him the photo. And he announces proudly that I was the first ever person on his tours to ever catch a photo of the Loch Ness Monster. I fucking did it. I, even if I was completely wrong about the identity, I still fucking got it. Immediately when I went to the hotel, I pulled up the official Loch Ness Registry and I put in my report. Reporters started contacting me right as I was on the plane back to the United States. And the story spread to which half of the articles said I was a woman. I'm like, excuse me, but I would be a very ugly woman. Just look at my sisters. I know it's 2019, but I am a man. And I am a man who goes and hunts the things that roam the darkness. I am just in a very jacked up mood right now, as you can probably tell. 
And it was after I saw that news article about the DNA study that I got this newfound energy from. Essentially, now that was the end of my story. By the time the article spread, I saw that they had mentioned me on Coast to Coast AM and I was thrilled. I don't do this for the showmanship, but I do like, I do like entertaining. That's why I partially own a couple entertainment studios. That's why I invested in those companies. Anyway. I like to tell stories. So, I believe, if my memory serves correct, I would have to double check. But in the months just after I got back, it was announced that a group of scientists were going to try a new way to catalog the species that live within Loch Ness. Essentially the idea was they would go around to different spots around Loch Ness at various different depths, collect water samples, then analyze the DNA collected from said samples to see if anything funky comes up. This morning at around 4 o'clock in the morning if I remember correctly, I was very sleep deprived because I overslept my alarm set for my lame day job. <sighs> anyway, I got the notice that lot the DNA results were in, but DNA results were in, revealing a surprising update, as some of the DNA tests were also ran against popular Nessie theories to find out if it was in fact the remnants of a species of dinosaur that still roamed the earth, or if it was just a really, really big fish. As for what the results were, they didn't fucking announce those teas. However, they kept using the word surprising. To which they also mentioned they will not be revealing more details until next month. So maybe me doing this episode is me setting myself up for a big failure. But I thought it was still worth a mention. Because either way, it seems to prove that there is something in that water that could very well either give the credibility it so well deserves or put the mystery to rest forever. I'll be watching this story very carefully. If you want to take a look at the article, I actually included a link in it in the episode description. So I'll just take a look at that if you want to find out more details. This will be something worth watching. So like I said, I've always found this type of thing interesting. And the discovery of what Loch Ness could very well be may just make Loch Ness an even bigger tourist spot than it ever has been. So until we find out more details, this case is still open. I want to know what you all think. What are your thoughts? on these experiments to try to catalog Nessie. Do you think it's going to be a good idea what they might potentially do? Because if it is... I should also mention that in the article it's also 
they also held back the results because they were trying to get the documentary rights in order to release the results, but couldn't get anybody on board. So what are your thoughts on this matter? If Nessie is in fact proven to exist, the Loch Ness Monster is in fact real. What do you think is going to happen next? My honest opinion, if they know they're going to have a sp another species out there to catalog, they're going to want to observe. And it's big. Discussions I've had with others on this topic say that people might try to capture it, which could very well be the case. If I remember correctly, a circus that ran near Loch Ness wanted to try to capture the animal to use for its show. I mentioned that in a previous episode. But would that be such a good idea? If someone was actually able to capture Nessie, how do we know that Nessie isn't the one thing that keeps that ecosystem in check? If we remove Nessie from that habitat, what would happen? That's something to consider. Well, I want to hear your thoughts. Do you think this is all BS? Or do you think there could be something here? I want to hear your thoughts. Have you ever visited Loch Ness yourself? If you haven't, have you ever wanted to? Do you plan on doing it? I highly recommend it, if that's the case. And with that, I want to see your comments below. Please do be respectful to one another. Be kind. And I will see you next time. Catch me on Friday for a regular episode on the anatomy of demons. See you then, my friends.